from Southern California's largest paint and sip studio, Spotlight with Purple Easel. Welcome to Purple Easel Spotlight, where we put the spotlight on artists and creatives. My name's LaToya. And I'm Megan. And we're both art instructors here at Purple Easel, the world's largest paint and sip studio. And of course, we think the world. Something like that. We want to think the world, at least in Southern California, though. Yes, Southern California and world. We'll we'll say the world. (laughs) (laughs) We have an online presence. That makes us work. Yeah, right? Done. We have a YouTube. It's fine. It's fine. So we have a good show for you today. We got some art news. We got some life news. We got some newsy news. Yes. <laughs> I'm nervous. Really? Yeah. So this research was really clunky. Oh. Oh, I hate when that happens. Yeah. Okay. It's so most of the time when we're going through, we can find articles that will explain kind of the different series an artist goes through mm-hmm. and they'll have examples. And so you're just pulling in supplemental information. This one, every article had like no pictures. Oh, it not pictures. pictures. It would talk about stuff and then I'd have to go search for it and oh. like, wait, is this actually? And his images are so great. You'll understand when you see it. Um, that I was like, wait, is this the actual work or is this the reference? Like, yeah. I don't know. And so it oh, it was okay. clunky. It was a lot of, I felt like a pin pinball. Okay. Like just bouncing all over the place. So I hope it ends up being cohesive. Okay. Yeah, I'm sure it will. But uh, I Happy think I want to start with my exciting thing for the week. Yes. Because I'm a book nerd. Woo! And I got a new book. And I'm so excited about it. And I like it. Uh, yeah. So I sat on my bed and it was wrapped in cellophane. And I like <laughs> unwrapped it and I very carefully opened it up. And I hear the little <laughs> as I, you know, settle the cover down. Um, but it's so cool. It talks about kind of. How the history of color, yeah. where it comes from, what it's made out of. Pigments and dyes mm-hmm. and all kinds of things. And I've already, I've barely even gotten into it, but I've already made reference to it during one of my events. Oh. That um, palm tree painting I just recently Oh, yeah, did. windswept palms. Yeah. Yes. Um, there's some, like, mauve oh, yes. clouds in it, mm-hmm. which, if you don't know this, cadmium red and phthalo blue do not make a nice purple. Mm. They do not. Mm. Even when you add white to it to lighten it up, it turns into a grayish mm-hmm. mauve, mm-hmm. which was perfect for the needs I had. Yes. But I was explaining, I was like, yo, I just found out uh-huh. mauve is actually originally a nice bright, like lilac kind of color. Let's see if we can find it. And um what we know of as mob is just the faded version of it. Like, this is the craziest thing. So this is allegedly, <laughs> allegedly. I, it's not alleged. It's actually it's history. <laughs> it's crazy. Yes. So this is what mob actually is supposed to look like, but it's been faded, like you said, to the yeah. point to where we think it's like the. I feel like my whole life has been a lie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's super weird. It's super weird to see mob and it be this. Right. That's indigo. Come yes, on. No. Anyways, yeah. it was one of the first like non-organic. Oh yeah, I think I read that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. So it's it's really cool. Like yeah. this book. I'm no, I was so enjoying here for it. it. The history of color. Who knew? Like, yeah. I'm yes, so you're stoked. Sepia. From yeah. Photos and stuff like that. No, I was really digging this book for like the. Last 40 minutes, I just have <laughs> yeah, been in we it. We were waiting, yeah. Yeah, so yeah, I highly rec- rec- blah, 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 blah. Yes. recommend this book, The Brilliant History of Color and Art by, yeah. by Megan. And it's pretty. So yeah. good good coffee table book if if there ever was one. Ooh, okay. Love me a good coffee table book. Well, thank you for sharing. Yeah, yeah. My news is not like super exciting. It was just kind of interesting. So me and my fiance did wedding venue stuff. We took like another tour Yada, yada, yada. But the reason why I'm bringing this up is because you know how we're like artists, we know colors and, but there's like a, okay, but I'm so excited. <laughs> you know how there's like a thing and it might not be painting. So it, it could be something else like wood. Mm-hmm. And this person is like a wood specialist. They know everything about wood. Yeah. They're kind of sewer. So I was speaking to the event coordinator lady and she was like, okay, so what are going to be your colors? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And then we're breaking down the tablecloth and the napkins. And she's like, oh, no, that's going to look bad. No. What you want to do is you want to use this color and use this as an accent ring on the neck. And da, da, da. we're like, oh, 
oh yeah 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but she's like she's always saying trust the trust the vision yeah trust the vision trust the vision and she's always saying like, like yo i'm the bride it's my vision <laughs> well, no, I, I like her for that this is exactly why i like her because i believe her like she mm-hmm. does so many events she's and i've done it yeah yeah she's she expert. knows what looks good and mm-hmm. i and ours is gonna be a medieval theme so yeah. she knows like okay this is good this is good don't do that color da, 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 da. so anyways i like that and i was like oh that's so cool to that's not my theme necessarily is um uh interior decorating mm-hmm. and stuff like i mean i do i think i'm good at it but there's people who are like no that's my thing i know cloths i know fabrics i know yep. these plants i know like da, 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 there's da, da. a whole psychology around colors that yeah. you surround yourself with like mm-hmm. it it goes deep yeah, yeah that's really cool it's mm-hmm. i part of me that's why i like watching like hdtv and stuff okay and it's Fair. a yeah. lot of it's fads and trends and whatever, but, but there are some cool references to that. Right. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So I think it's cool to see kind of how a room comes together. Yeah. There's something really satisfying about it. Yeah. The whole feng shui and everything. Oh, gosh. Yeah. yeah. So I think that's really cool. It's it's art related. That's in a cool. Way. That is color. It's yeah. color. Yeah. There we go. Exactly. Look at that. Come full circle. Yay for color. We love color. So we got some art news about some elephants. We got the Great Elephant <laughs> Migration Exhibit in Rhode Island looking for Ooh. elephant guardians. They, if you need a job. Yeah. They need people to discuss the exhibit with tourists as well as care for the elephants. <laughs> Which you don't need a zoology degree or anything. No. Like, they're so cute. And they're life-size, too. Yeah, Yay. that's so cool. So what you're going to be seeing are these huge wooden life-size elephants. And scrolly, scrolly. Super cool sculptures. I like them. I want to pet them even though they're not I real. know. They look so tactile. Yeah. Like it just makes you want to touch it. Yeah, totally. And they're so, so Super cute. cool. They kind of remind me, okay. I love this photo, by the way. It's like so African Parental? safari. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like your local elephant. African, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the big Great. safari. It kind of reminds me of, have you seen those dinosaurs in Cabazon? Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I know of them. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Kind of uh, reminds me. Scrolly, 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 scrolly. We got some more words to say. For the new port display, the sale of elephants will benefit Save the Bay's efforts to remove invasive reeds. Found in local salt marshes, the exhibit will remain on display until the end of August. So if you're rhode island local please check it out for us because yes. that's that's cool pretty cool yeah touch them for us <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's not like in a museum right where it's yeah. hands uh, i would think well the outdoor sculptures are normally a little more lax I although see. maybe that's what the guardians are really there for uh, <laughs> don't touch the elephants uh, maybe i like the portal police <gasps> yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, forgot about that portal already. Oh, boy. What else you got? All right, we also got scrolly, scrolly. All right, so you're going to be seeing a seven-foot marble statue of Greek god Hermes. I love Hermes. I know, right? Mercury, Virgo, Gemini, folks, ruled by Hermes, <laughs> has been uncovered in a ancient Rome sewer in a Bulgarian village. It was found during an excavation and archaeologists believe that it was carefully barrel- buried mm-hmm. um, intentionally because pagan beliefs were forbidden. And once new ideologies came about, that yeah. was a thing. But they also wanted to take care of the old deities. Um, so, yeah, they claim that this was really like the ha- the the head was really well preserved. Um, I think some of the fingers might have gotten like chipped. Yeah. Um, but it was very like very nice. That's so, cool. So. It's nice that we were able to get a largely intact specimen from back then and i can totally see that happening like you think of rome and greece and all the the sacking and the conquests Mm -hmm. they had to hide the art yeah like they don't want everything to get destroyed so i'm wondering how many other things yeah no i thought the same too i'm like okay they found hermes then who else is out i know (laughs) right buried yeah all the other olympians somewhere yeah who knows Speaking of things that have been lost. Oh. So um, there's a Vincent van Gogh portrait called the Moroccan. It's the um, emperor, prince, something of Morocco. Good. And uh, it's detailed in this book by Suzanne Kennedy called Crime and Canvas. 
Apparently, her mother got this painting at a flea market. And it, it's part of one of the biggest art heists in history. <laughs> so it goes on to like, this book dives in pretty deep uh -huh. about all the crazy things that happen with this rich billionaire who stole all this work, but then felt guilty and then sold it off for nothing. And then people didn't know what they had. Oh, yeah. So, Whoa. yeah. If you like true crime and art, this might be the perfect book for you. Wow. It's pretty cool. It seems like something out of a movie. Yeah. No, it's it really does. Intense. So, breaking news. Uh, doo -doo 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 we just got the power. <laughs> so, we can actually um, choose the pace here and make sure that we're moving along at a nice clip. All righty. Yeah, yeah. Yes. So, that's why we have a mouse suddenly because we're smart. Popped out of nowhere. Yeah. Um, but this little last bit of news is pretty fun for us meme lovers. Oh, I love memes. Get your JT mugshot prints because <laughs> they're selling fast. So a duo artist um, collaboration has created Tuesday Night Out in an Andy Warhol-esque image of our lovely mugshot from Justin Timberlake. And here is a little quote from them. Andy Warhol's genius was in knowing which images would capture and evoke a moment in time. And Justin's mugshot seemed to me to do exactly that. I thought it was deserving of the Warhol treatment, and I believe Andy would approve. This is going to ruin the tour. I love that because, okay, there's this, like, meme of him. Like, you say that because he said that when the cops, like, got Justin Timberlake. He's like, oh, this is going to ruin the tour. And the guy was like, what tour? He's like, the world tour. He's like, yeah, buddy, right, sure. So anyways, <laughs> that happened. So everybody on the internet, like, if something bad happens, you're like, this is going to ruin the tour. <laughs> and apparently the gallery that is selling this mm -hmm. is right across the street from where he got pulled over uh, or where he had the uh -huh. martini or whatever. <laughs> it was so um yeah it all kind of came full circle and they've been getting a lot of interest once they put it in the window <laughs> so here you go you can get some prints i would love this as a shirt it would i would love shirt. this as a shirt it would be a great shirt i can't decide which color scheme i like the best but i uh, it's fun it's fun and i'm here for it i am one probably gonna be nothing in like yeah no that's how it works a few yeah. months but for now yes i have so many <laughs> meme related shirts <laughs> and it, no, nobody cares now. Yeah, they go out of right. style so fast. But yeah. I thought that was I love that. an enjoyable little bit for us. It was very enjoyable. I thoroughly enjoyed. And it actually kind of leads into our artists. Oh, so we are going to spotlight Chuck Close, who is famous for portraiture and things that people weren't doing at the time <laughs> at all. So he was really kind of revolutionary. Uh, he graduated from the University of Washington in 1962, went on to study at Yale and then in Vienna. Abstract expressionism was in high gear when he was going through his formal schooling, so that showed a lot of mm. influence for him and left a lasting impact. A fun fact is he suffered from prosophagnosia. <laughs> Pro so yeah. yeah, yeah, something huh. like that. Uh, where you can't recognize faces. Oh, oh no. Yeah, like your mother's face. Like, yes, yeah, the face. memory associated with a person's face. Uh -huh. Like you don't connect that. Oh, I know who that person is. Then you see your forever like, who are you? Yeah, basically. What? Like, there's no facial recognition. That's crazy. Which probably explains why he was so obsessed yeah. with portraits. Uh-huh, yeah. And I think it's really cool. He did a lot of self-portraits over the time. Oh, I've seen this. Oh, so that's him. That's him. Mm, okay. So in 67, he took a black and white self-portrait and then used the grid method to mm. enlarge it, which was not happening. Uh -huh. And he used different materials. Oh. So he was like, I'm not going to just use a brush and paint. And mm -hmm. he used um, razor blades and all kinds of stuff. Mm. Uh, let's see. It says he achieved this using a new approach to painting technique with non-traditional tools, such as an airbrush, a razor blade, and a racer on a power drill. 
the first <laughs> mechanical eraser. Yeah, go. <laughs> <laughs> and the process was one of conservation and reduction where the paint was thinned down, scraped, erased, and reapplied mm. sparingly. One tube of black paint was used to produce seven portraits. What? And these are giant. Scratch his head. Right. And it's so photorealistic. Yeah. And that's was... part of why this was so challenging because looking for these images, I'm oh. like, wait, is this the reference yeah. or is this the actual work? Uh huh. Just look at these. Wait. 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 <laughs> yeah. So these are before there was the technology to like blow up images. So he was painstakingly going grid by grid to duplicate it larger. In fact, he inspired the invention of the inkjet printer, which totally checks out. Yes. I mean, because there was obviously this need, right? Yes. Like, it, it wasn't existing until then. And then in the later 70s, he decided to experiment with color. I'm, um, it's not real. Dude. This is AI. <laughs> dude, dude, not only is this literally like a photograph. Yeah. Um, here's a close up of the eye. Goodness gracious. Look at all the little pores and the. And this is ginormous scale. Yes. So, like, when you're standing there looking at it, uh -huh. you're yeah. at eye height, basically. That's insane. I like, but have not no only words. That. He did a special technique where he used CMYK. Okay. So he layered in cyan, magenta, and yellow, and black. Mm -hmm. Literally one color at a time, just like screen printing. Because he wanted uh, to see if he could do it. Well. And he got this. <laughs> WTF. <laughs> like, I just am like my mind's blown. What? I could never in a million years. What is this? Right. So here's a few more examples. I love this one because the wiry glasses and the the different textures of hair, like the pattern on the shirt. Okay. He's so good. Was he like had a gazillion dollars? <laughs> he was pretty popular. He's he's done a lot of celebrity and stuff but wasn't really commissions he just did what he wanted to do mm -hmm. um he had a lot of shows over the years and you can see i mean <sighs> the eyes are so piercing it's insane mm. but he kind of went through stages like many artists do where yeah. he starts to experiment so mm -hmm. we see here the photorealistic version of Phil Glass, who's a composer. Okay. He's a friend of his. And then he goes back to it repeatedly throughout mm -hmm. his career. Then he tries it in watercolor. Pause. Oh, there you go. And then he starts doing fingerprints with an ink pad. This like, is so that time period. <laughs> right? <laughs> like, <laughs> come on. That looks cool. It's cool. It's so cool. And I love that he revisits the same image. Yeah. Like, how can I mix it up? It's very yeah. like Andy Warhol uh -huh. would do, right? Trying different colors and stuff. But he's using completely different this techniques. so cool. I think it's fabulous. In fact, here, he's done Phil Glass so much <laughs> that they had a whole exhibit of just Phil Glass. That's cool. Isn't that neat? I'd be so, like, internally famous. Like, oh, my gosh, thank you for, like, drawing me a right. million times. <laughs> it's, it's really kind of funny because I've seen Philip Glass in concert at the Walt Disney Concert Hall. It's mm -hmm. the only time I've been there. It was a free show. Yeah. And um, he has a really interesting composer. Like, it's mm -hmm. kind of a minimalist. He does a bunch of... It's like thinking of a multimedia art project mm -hmm. in music. Mm -hmm. Like, he oh. uses some... Oh. abnormal things. Uh -huh. So I think it's kind of funny that they had this friendship and he just, he just, just dedicated so much of his effort. I wonder Isn't if he cool? did that also because of this the condition. Yeah. I don't know if it was kind of like the program is brain. Right, maybe. Like now I, I know who this is because I've stared at it so much, yeah. right? Like, that's crazy. He did so many different kind of things. He did lithographs, 
tapestries, Ooh. Durango types, etchings, like every possible medium. It's so cool. And then, and then the event took place. Okay. So he also, okay. I feel like way back in the days I studied this guy and now it's all coming back to me. I'm like, okay, this so, guy. <laughs> funny you should mention that because. In AP portfolio, mm -hmm. we had to do a presentation on an artist. And one of the other person, persons, people in my class did Chuck Close. So I always kind of remembered it. And fast forward to like MySpace days. <laughs> I would feature artists. And I totally oh. forgot that I did this until I was pulling up images. I'm like, wait, I've been here before. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and I would like put up a bunch of their work and be yeah. like, hey, check out this artist. And then my just normal friends would be like, oh, that's cool. Uh -huh. Oh, but wow. Like, I was spotlighting before Spotlight. Wow. So spotlight Inception. I know. Um, but anyway, in 1988, he was giving a speech. Something didn't feel right. As soon as he was done with the speech, walked across the street to the hospital and then had a aneurysm. Okay. Uh -huh. something, some sort of spinal artery okay. basically got messed up and then he was paralyzed from the neck down but after intense rehab uh -huh. he was able to regain some movement okay enough to continue to allow him to paint great so you can see here um he's basically got a nice like like grid traction yeah. yeah that allows him they just tape the paintbrush to mm -hmm. his hands he had assistance can't move it up and slide yeah it. Okay. Um, so he was able to, you know, do the arm movements. And my thought was, oh, that's where his style took a huge turn, mm -hmm. right? No. People say they can't tell the difference between the work he did before and the work he did after. It had really little bearing on his experimentation mm -hmm. with how he started to develop new work. Wow. Just crazy. So cool. It's so cool. And it's nice that he had the resources to kind of yeah. figure out a system that would work for him. Uh -huh. And you can kind of see it in these mm -hmm. images, like tilting the, yeah. the work and nice. the reference. And it's uh, so cool. But he basically uses all these little abstract They're kind of like miniature Kaczynski circles yes. in a way. Yes. And then... When you back out, you get this still realistic looking portrait. It's like, it's like pixels. It is. In a way. It is. It's totally like pixels mm -hmm. or like you think uh, probably in the early thousands or whatever, you would see all those like photographs of something, but you look close and it's a bunch of little yeah. photographs all put together. Uh -huh. um, same kind of idea. It's just, it's so impressive to me. Well, I like how we get some of the close-ups. And it really is just abstract little dads. You know, I like it dads. because it also feels like there's movement or they're moving and there's no movement. Like yeah. your brain and like my brain's like... Right. It's not <laughs> just a static image yeah. because of all the little diddly bits going on. <laughs> yeah. As I mentioned, he did a ton of self-portraits. So uh -huh. here's a slew of them. We've got this one, which is cool because it shows the up close okay, and yeah. the normal. And then he's black and white. He uses funky colors. Uh, amazing. It, it It's so impressive to me. Look at the eyes on this little baby. Like, it's actually probably nine little squares on mm -hmm. the grid to make up the eye. And if you look at each one, they're so different. Mm -hmm, yeah. But somehow it still it works reads though. Yeah. in the overall picture. Can you, okay, question, mm -hmm. weird question. I know some people can do this, but can you like blur your eyes on command? Yeah. Okay. Because I'm doing cross it. them a little bit, yeah. Okay, yeah, because I'm blurring it just yeah. so the colors will blur. And then I like, so magic eye. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Kind of, magic I'm, I'm magic eyeing this. Um, yeah, so I can, you can, without having to stand back, essentially. Yeah, yeah. It's kind of like a cheat way of having right, to that. Because it is bigger. It's not as small and compact as yeah. like magic eyes were, which, if you haven't seen that episode, you should definitely go back because that was a really fun Yeah, thing. it was. He did cover for Paul Simon's album. Mm -hmm. 
This was like just the close up of it. It's actually, if you go back, it's the whole thing, just like it's all his cool other ones. It's cool because it almost kind of looks like, like I see the shapes, but because it's cropped in this one image, yeah. so to speak, it looks like there's a crying eye or there's kind of like this tear movement mm -hmm. on the left hand side, which you can see is like some sort of symbolism to the, to the album or something. Yeah. yeah. And then we have uh, this lovely image of Brad Pitt's tapestries. So I tried to figure it out. Like, how is this dude making tapestries? Yeah. Hell. Um, I don't know. I still don't have a, a great answer, except that they were machine loomed. So he okay. did something that they fed into a machine and then it pumped it out for him. But I mean, what? What an honor to be graced to be a portrait right by this artist <laughs> and then things kind of start going downhill for oh, him Lord. in 2013 he was diagnosed with alzheimer's which in 2015 was later changed to free pre frontotemporal temporal dementia a dementia which is essentially like having a lobotomy oh it kind of screwed up the part of his brain that was in charge of executive function. Uh -huh. So he was not the most tactful person. He just kind of said, he had no filter anymore. He said whatever he was thinking, yeah. whether it was nice or not. And then in 2017, he was essentially sidelined from the entire art community community when women came forward and accused him of um, sexual harassment he maintained his innocence saying last time i looked discomfort was not a major offense close said in his apology quite an apology mm -hmm. i never reduced anyone to tears no one ever ran out of the place if i embarrassed anyone or made them feel uncomfortable i am truly sorry i didn't mean to i acknowledge having a dirty mouth but we're all adults. Mm -hmm. Okay. So take that for what it okay. is. All right. But it did prompt a wider discussion about separating the art from the artists, mm -hmm. and uh -huh. several museums indefinitely postponed some uh, of his shows. Yeah. Okay. In fact, the National Portrait Gallery added a little blurb that acknowledged the allegations um, to its wall labels of his Clinton portrait. Okay, which nice. you can see here, <laughs> which is... I mean, it's so, <laughs> just, I love it. I love that this is the portrait for a president. That's great. Yes. Um, but they kind of encapsulated it by saying, at the portrait gallery, we try to be fairly transparent about a person's life, but there's no moral test to be here or nobody would be here at all. Okay. Okay. So, I mean, they acknowledged it, but in the grand scheme of things, they still kept his work. Because, okay, I mean, yeah. every other artist probably has some sort of issue, too. Yeah. Um, so, Fair. he has remained in museums, but he had not had a solo show since the accusations came out until last year. Oh. So, the Pace Gallery kind of followed him throughout his entire career. Mm -hmm constantly did exhibits for him and they really felt like they had to close the circle. <laughs> and so they featured some of his previously unexhibited work um, leading up to his death in 2021. Wow. So we have like Claire Danes mm -hmm. and some more Brad Pitt. Mm -hmm. It's um, so crazy that we know that's Brad Pitt. However, I, I, my brain also does read Hulk Holden. You see it? I can see it. I can see it. The eyes are kind of beady in this particular one. Yeah. And he has just done like a color in each little section uh -huh. instead of yeah. the kind of more abstract mm -hmm. shapes and stuff. Um, so it is more pixelated. Yeah. But I mean, dude was getting pretty old. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I mean, he led a life. I'm like, is this the last one? No. Uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, it's so good. It's so good. It's so good. I wanted there to be more. It's so good. Uh, so I'm going to save the discussion question okay. till the end. Okay. But think about what how you're feeling right now. Okay. Right? All right. And then we're going to go into some super cool purple easel talk. Yeah. Because why wouldn't we? Of course. We work here. 
<laughs> it's true. It's true. That's literally why we're here. So I pulled a really cool review. Um, this one was from Google Reviews. Hey. And it's from Jacqueline Carey. And it says, this place was amazing. It was set up wonderfully. The people who worked there were fantastic. The teacher was great. And it was so much fun. And the place is just beautiful. Please go, go here. I think I ruined that. That's fine. I'm we so sorry. It. We had pre-planned the last <laughs> word to say go there. And I pre-said it's it all fine. It's fine. Anyway. But I just thought it was really kind of nice <laughs> to sink. It hit on a bunch of different things. Yeah, no. I, I, I do very much like that. It's it's like a good general that's what it's like to be here. Right. Compliment. Yeah. Like so, it's true. So come here because <laughs> yes. it's worth going here. And if you can't come here, if you're not in Southern California, we've got Purple Easel Plus, Plus online. which gives you all the things on the interwebs. Mm -hmm. You can control the pace just like us. With <laughs> yes, you have a mouse. <laughs> so you can pause, stop, play, uh, rewind if you want to. And you can have your little snacks and wine at home and paint one of our paintings at home as well on Purple Easel Plus. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. But I have an update on our subscribers. Oh, do you? We're up to 58. <gasps> really? And we got some comments. So I'm super stoked. Thank you. <laughs> so I'm thinking like, Thank okay, we're, we're nearing 100. Yeah. We can round it, right? Yeah. <laughs> like, maybe we'll, we'll have to come up with some sort of like, maybe we'll send a, painter, a painting to our 100th Ooh, subscriber yeah. or something. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah fun, yeah. right? Yeah, that's super fun. I yeah. like that idea. So uh, we'll kind of brainstorm that yes. one. And in the meantime, uh, do do all the things. Yes. You want to like, subscribe, share, ring that bell, uh, add to the conversation. Let us know what you've been liking. Um, have any comments. more comments. Yeah, more comments. Because we want to know, like, your guys' opinions on so what we... Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, ooh. chat was like, ooh. Yeah. <laughs> so definitely comment. We want to know what you guys are thinking. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Ooh. All right. So now we go in Ooh. to our new artist. Wow. I'm pretty wow. excited. So this is Jeffrey A. Mazaros, a.k.a. Jam Bottle Cap Art. <gasps> nice. I was like, are those bottle caps? It is bottle caps. And I watched his little um, FYI video uh -huh. for his new subscribers or whatever. He has his own custom-made hydraulic press. That smashes all his bottle caps mm -hmm. the way he needs them to be. And he's been doing this for about 17 years. Mm. He was a bartender. <laughs> yeah, that's was <laughs> There's all these bottle caps. And uh, he's like, okay. I can do something with this. And so kind of became a hoarder for a while <laughs> and then started to play. And here we are. You know what's really cool about this picture that you're seeing is I only, only, and I've been scanning, scan, 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 scanning. Mm -hmm. I only see those two bottle caps for the pupils for the eyes mm -hmm. for Einstein. The two brown ones. I don't see them anywhere else unless I'm tripping. But uh, yeah, they might be the only ones. I would imagine like you come across something more unique and special. And yeah. you get it a, a separate space because you're like, this one's going to be like mm -hmm. the crown jewel or something. It's got to be fun. I mean, he's got to spend so much time separating all the yeah, colors. Yeah, I know, yeah. I was looking at all the layering, just in the wrinkle in the forehead. Mm -hmm. There's got to be, there's so much overlap. Yeah. Yeah, and you'll notice in some of the images later on that he does kind of fold them or cut okay, them or something yeah, okay. too. Um, here we have a tiger oh. for Year of the Tiger. I like all the colors. Yeah. It's really kind of a subdued palette. He's got a lot of repeat bottle caps in this particular one. But the line, it's so strong. You know what's... I, okay, so if you were to just take this as like a flat, uh, I don't know, like vector image or whatever, mm -hmm. it's not too exciting. But because there's all these little bits, I feel like the the brain and the eyes are like... Doo -doo 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 -doo. Yeah. It makes you like search for things. I don't know. I'm having a good time just like looking around at all the different textures. And I know it's like the same bottle, like, so like black, right. yellow, white... But I don't know. It's fun. To, I don't know. It's much more it fun. It gives <laughs> me the same kind of experience as a viewer that the Chuck Close paintings do. I see what you did there. And I see what you did there. Looking for all the little bits. Always. 
Here we have a wonderful Gemini Prince, which I think is so cool because we got color on one side and black and white on yeah. the other side. And the eyes, the eyes, like they're two different colors, yeah. but it's still so piercing and reads as one cohesive. This is so fun for me to look at. <laughs> I'm Isn't like, ooh, ooh, ooh. and here's a little close up and then you can oh, see how okay. he does some of the layering, all the little nails with his nail gun and he's got like a piece of a bottle cap uh -huh. for like the shiny in the eye yeah wow is this is it like is it like glue or like he's he like oh, nail he nailed it. it yeah yeah that's yeah. right i just said that <laughs> <laughs> and we got oh, freddy nice our this queen nice. i uh, just the background. Mm -hmm. There's like this slow fade. It reminds mm -hmm. me of our um, Paint Your Pet a lot oh, of them, where you yeah, have yeah, kind of yeah. that halo effect yeah. blending out into the background. It's like a natural drop shadow yeah. kind of thing. That's so It's cool. so pop arty. Yeah. Because of the colors and stuff. But I also want to touch it. I might I know, like. Oh, I know, right? Like, like it hurts. I wonder <laughs> if it's smooth. Yeah. It looks like it's been kind of smoothed out by the way he presses it. Mm -hmm. So I would hope he's not getting a bunch of cuts. I think of that scene from Twister where they're using all the Pepsi cans to make the little like gizmos that fly up into the Twister. But like, you got to know cutting all of that aluminum would have been so sharp and like yeah. they were bleeding everywhere i'm sure so. <laughs> it's been a long time since i've seen that movie i was like trying to go back in my memory data bank we got the puppy <laughs> i like the puppy's little tongue sticking yeah. out and i just like all the little nuances of color that yeah, he's purple yeah. he's created put together and I think, um, cause some of the, okay, so like the black bottle caps, mm -hmm. some are, some of them are the black and white, but there are black pink ones too. Yep. There's a little bit of color in yeah. there. And you'll see that in, um, a later one really show up. Whoa. We got whoa, Marilyn. Whoa. He's done several Marilyns. It was kind of hard to get images from him too, because so much of his stuff is reels, which is awesome. I love seeing the process. It's really cool. He does some fun little things, but. I'm like, that doesn't really yeah. work. Yeah, I ran into purposes. that problem too, yeah. yeah. So um, I had to dig a little bit into the Instagram to uh -huh. find still images. Um, but I love yeah. some of these close-ups. This one especially at the angle. Mm. like So you can see it. Yeah. I want to touch them. I, I know. <laughs> it's like I want, he needs to do a dragon. <gasps> Where it's like the scales, right? Yeah. Overlapping and I could just run my fingers across yeah. it. Yeah. I don't have an extra 10K sitting around for a commission. <laughs> but man. Nice. Bob Marley. It's the okay. Colors. I like the um the way they're draping. It looks like each dreadlock in a way. Yes. Versus Marilyn's hair. Very that's, specific yeah. as to creating that line, mm -hmm. that flow. That's cool. Uh, one of his first, or I guess his very first one was a John Lennon one, mm -hmm. and this is a redo. So he also went back and kind of did the same pieces oh, okay. over again, um, okay. I'm sure as his skill and his yeah. resources. Now he is doing this full time, has been for about a year and a half, mm -hmm. and people donate bottle caps. I was them. just about to ask that. He still that. got okay. friends who are bartenders, uh -huh. so he still, and his own collection, but like people will just send him Nice. Isn't that cool? Like, do something with these. Yeah. It's good yeah. trash otherwise. Yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. I love that. I love that you we're can upcycling. Make... Yeah. To such a, like, degree of finesse, you know? It's not just a bunch of stuff kind of glued together. Mm -hmm. It's, there's a lot of thought put into this. You know, stuff like this amazes me uh, about human beings in general. We'll take anything, literally anything, and turn yeah. it into art or, I don't know, like stuff, <laughs> stuff, stuff, yeah. art, making stuff into other stuff. <laughs> yeah. But like, <laughs> instead of trash stuff, it's now art stuff. Yeah. Yeah. It's beautiful. They're repurposed. Yep. They're, they're, he's got this black and white, but then color surrounding it. I just really like how he plays with the color. I like the eyes because it looks, it has like a three ring band mm -hmm. around both of them. That's pretty cool. Yeah, that is super cool. Nice. This one in particular, Ooh. I love because it's black and white. 
but there's still those little flecks of color. Yeah. The hair, the oh, I, I know. See so that Jim Morrison, come on, man, this is this is beautiful. <laughs> Just the, yeah. look at the lips. I know. I want to so badly, like if I could zoom up on this one, I I want to see like even crazier, more detail, like that. Okay, yeah. Well, okay, now go up a little bit again. Okay, okay. Mm, mm. It's magical. That's crazy. That's crazy. It, it It's like mosaic, but not yeah. in like, I just love that he's using something that would be discarded. I just, it's so cool. This was a really good pick. Thanks. Yeah. I thought it really kind of tied into the Chuck Close style. Uh, hey, oh, yeah. And you can see kind of this evolution and using found objects. So now it's time to discuss. Oh, how much do you separate the artist from the work? Oh, no. <laughs> I'm going to get canceled. <laughs> I don't know. This is this is one of those cancelable questions. I, I don't know. know. It's so I hard. It's so hard. And me as a Libra especially, I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, I've had this discussion with another artist here. And, and I was like, "What's where's the cutoff point? We don't know. Where right. is the cutoff point? When do you cancel somebody yeah, versus... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Being like, ah, right. But let the yeah. work speak, right? Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Uh -huh. For Chuck Close in particular, and then I'm not condoning anything. I can see it happening. If he had assistance mm -hmm. and he needed models and he was more critical of them than he needed to be, um, you know, it probably didn't feel too good. Yeah. And I'm not saying that that's right. Mm -hmm. But in his case especially, he had a medical condition. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm like the same. Oh my gosh. Oh, I thought my hair popped out. No. <laughs> um, um yeah, it's just so hard to to and maybe that's the thing. Maybe we shouldn't judge so harshly. I don't know, because you never really know. No. You no. never really know. I remember I was just talking about that thing with Jim Carrey, and I was like, well, I don't know. I need to look into it. But even then I'm like, I don't know how true it is. I don't know. And you hear about stuff like celebrities all the time. Yeah. People um, just want to talk shit because they do. They do. Yeah. It's, it's yeah, it's like where the where's the truth? You don't know exactly. I feel like so my version of heaven is that I'm going to get answers to all these unanswered questions. Ah. Like, I'm going to get to the nitty-gritty, the truth. Like, I will find out the stupid little things that I've wondered about my whole life. Did they actually do that? Was it Johnny's fault or Amber Heard's <laughs> fault? I don't know. But, like, heaven to me is getting those answers. I just, Dude, no, that is so true. I never thought about that. I don't think about, like, okay, when I die, is there, like, a list of how many, like, Pepsis I had, you know, right. or something dumb right. like Where's that. Or something I slept, yeah. Um, but, like... Like, but yeah, do you want to know the truth? I know. Like all of the great questions of the universe too, but also the stupid <laughs> shit. <'Cause> like, <laughs> these are the things that keep me up at night. Huh. I don't, I don't have an answer. No. Yeah. This one is, is hard because yeah, there's, I don't think that, I think the answer lies in the individual. Yeah. And everybody has their own opinion about. It's like Michael Jackson, right? Like. I the music is the music. Yes. And, and, the, but then there's people. But then there's things. But then yeah. there's also people who are like, that wasn't my experience at all. But yeah. Kelly Culkin's like, still maintains that yeah. it was cool. Yeah. So I don't, yeah. I don't know. I yeah. wasn't there. So I can't really judge to that level. Mm -hmm. I mean, all the artists we talk about have some stuff going on. Just like Justin Timberlake. Ju yeah. <laughs> right. It's, nobody's perfect. We're human. Yes. Yeah. Human nature. You're going to make mistakes. Mm -hmm. You're not going to live this picture perfect life. And if you do, it's because people don't know. Yeah. Like, you get in it. <laughs> yeah. So that's one other reason that I do not wish fame upon myself. Like a little bit of fame is cool, but like right. a huge amount. I'm like, no, because I'm going to get canceled for what I said back when I was in. in and, and, and that's the thing. Fifth grade or like. As you grow as a person, yeah. your opinions change, yes. or they uh -huh. should. Yeah, they should. You learn things. You get things from other perspectives, and you're finally like, oh, you know, I get yeah, it. Yeah, that wasn't good. Yeah. Um, like, just simple. Like, I have a mom who has breast cancer, and so I'm purporting all this breast cancer awareness stuff, right? But then somebody comes along and is like, well, all cancer sucks. But it diminishes the experience of that person. Yeah. It's kind of insulting. Yeah. Like, of course all cancer sucks. Yeah. 
I'm we didn't say that it wasn't this cancer. Yeah, yeah. Right? like we can do multiple things. Right, like, <laughs> it's not taking away from somebody else. You don't need to gatekeep the condition. Yeah, basically. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's really tough. It's really tough. Yeah. There are certain things like no, that's an abuse of power, and that person should not be in that position. Like Harvey Weinstein, you mm-hmm. know, like yeah. There's like a he clear did, line. He did things he should not have done mm-hmm. that are should not be condoned, and he doesn't need to continue to, you know, do to do those things, yeah. but also be like part of the business. Yeah, like just you're done. Yeah. You're done. It's done. Yeah, some canceling is absolutely justified necessary, yeah. <laughs> and necessary, mm-hmm. and we shouldn't put up with things. Mm-hmm. Other things, you're like, well. <laughs> <laughs> it's tough it's Wasn't tough so good. i mean yeah. this is a hot topic yeah. and we would love to yeah. know like what are your thoughts how do you feel do you just look at work and that's it yeah. that's just the work or do you dig into the life of the artist mm-hmm. because these days it's real easy to just take everything at face value yeah and then sometimes i've found people dig too much and they're searching for something and i'm like you're gonna find dirt if you're looking for dirt yeah it's gonna happen yeah we're not perfect no so yeah, that was my <laughs> enthralling discussion. <laughs> I liked it. I liked it. I liked it. It's open-ended. I think that's a good place to kind of wrap it up. Yes, I agree. We're going to wrap up this episode. <laughs> so thank you all so much for tuning in. Make sure to check out Chuck Close and Jam Bottle Caps art for all kinds of fun images. All right. Make sure to visit purpleeaselplus.com to paint with the world's largest paint sub studio online. And if you're in Southern California, swing by the studio. In the meantime, create more and create often. Bye. I'm sorry. I just got this mouse today. I've, I've never used a mouse before in my entire life. With your left hand. Oh, that's left hand. That's, what... that's why. <laughs> there we go. All right. Oh, this is a fasty mouse. That's...